What's up? What is this going on here? This is not a fish. All right, guys, we got a special video today. We're hanging out with the Guppy Guy, one of the one of the breeders in the local Chicagoland area. He's also the host of the Fins and Feathers Fest, the festival that I personally sell at. It's a fish swap. That's a uh, people sell fish and birds there. And today we have an interview with him, and then we also get to walk around his uh, fish room, his check out his tank, some of his rare live bears. And uh, let's go. I'm excited about this one, guys. Let's get to it. All right, Adam. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So um, I guess to start off, my name's Adam Columbus. I'm 24. Um, I live in Round Lake, Illinois, and love my house because it's been able to uh, let me have a bunch of different fish tanks, a bunch of different uh, animals, and really be able to um, just enjoy the hobby uh, for myself, for my community, and you know, make a ton of new friends along the way. So that's a little bit about me. I run uh, the Fins and Feathers Fest in Mount Prospect, Illinois. Um, it's a bird and fish show uh, or swap that we have every single month. And uh, we're always looking for new vendors, always looking for new uh, community members to come and join us and have fun with us. Um, kids are always free and uh, we always have a great time. It's uh, probably my favorite day of the month. So that's a little bit about me. I'll show you guys some of my tanks and let's get into it. All right, Adam, so you were telling me about this rare live bear that you got. And um, I know you told me the name, but I can't remember. Yeah, so this is the Lenia. Um, it is a rare live bearer from uh, South America. Um, these are the bigger guys that we see um, in the background there. So these guys, um, very cool live bearer. Um, I got them a couple years ago from, you know, another member. Um, of the fishing community in um, the Chicagoland area here and have been able to um, raise them and start breeding them and really enjoy them. Um, I mean, not many people have them at all. Um, not many people even know the name of them, but it's been really awesome to have them and start raising them up. Um, and then if you can see, there are a little, um, some babies swimming around here. These are not Lemia babies. These are actually babies from um, another rare live bearer called the Gudea atropenis. And uh, we'll get into that in just a second, but these are babies of them. Um, they're a little small to be put in with their, um, their parents, so we stuck them in with the Lemias. They're both some from South America, both rare live bearers. And um, I just love to have live bearers that not many people have. Um, there's a good diatropenis that's getting a little larger and some more lemias. So we have a lot of great fish, um, coming up in the fish tank. I see a pleco or something down there. Right what do the, we have? Right in there, you see Oh it? yeah, there's the L333 pleco, um, just hanging out under the cave. Um, yeah, having he's, some fun. Yeah, he's digging life. All right, so let's talk about this tank right here. What do we got going on? All right, so this is the famous baby tank. Uh, this is the smallest tank that we have going on at the Fins and Feathers uh, house. Um, but it has a lot of our beautiful fish. Um, it's really the base of what we do. Uh, whenever a fish has babies, it most likely ends up in this tank. Uh, whether it's a guppy baby, uh, whether it's a little pleco baby, whether it's a sword tail baby, that I'm sure we'll see in a second. Um, they end up in this tank to grow out and not be eaten by the adults. And I think that's really important to have, um, some baby tanks open and available, um, for, you know, guppy babies and other babies to grow and thrive. Um, you can see some of them are already starting to get their really cool colors. Um, and others are just starting to grow. So providing a really nice place with some plants, uh, for them to hide and grow really nice and healthy. Um, is really ideal for the fish keeping hobby. Um, and I don't know if you can see down here, there are some baby L333 plecos um, just hanging out, growing out, and living a good life. Um, so we have a lot of stuff going on in the fish room. And oh, we have a little pygmy quarry that's hanging up on top of the filter there those are some of my favorite fish yeah so we got I a ton them. of little guys just growing out having a good life um it's really pretty guppy right there 
starting to get its color. Um, another one over here starting to get its color. Um, and yeah, just some really cool guppies getting their color and going to be ready to share with the fellow community pretty soon here. So what is so special about this tank right here? Yeah, this is probably my most unique tank. Uh, probably my favorite tank because it's closest to my bedroom, closest to my bathroom, and just the tank that I really love to work on and watch and enjoy. Now it's got a bunch of really awesome fish, uh, starting with these L333 plecos that you can see a couple of them on the rock, one up top, um, and one a little uh, lower towards the middle. Um, those are probably my favorite pleco. Um, they came from a really awesome breeder, Craig. Um, shout out to him. And just a really awesome guy, another really awesome person in the fish community, and just produces some really amazing fish. Um, these are some rare fish, they are some expensive fish, so I was really lucky to get them uh, pretty affordable from a really good guy. Um, so those are those plecos, and then also those big fish you see swimming around are Gudea atropenis. They are the, larger, the largest uh, goodyid. Um, in the species, very similar to the bulldog um, goodyid, and just a little bit bigger. And they are just the largest uh, freshwater live bearer that you can find. Now they come from South America um, in the rivers and are just a beautiful fish. Now those babies, um, we saw a little bit earlier with the lemias, uh, they come out roughly the size of guppies at about two or three months old. So they are a little larger. Um, but I still do like to separate them into that other tank, so as many can survive as possible. Um, yeah, I, I would imagine these guys are some hungry guys. <laughs> yeah, they are some hungry guys. They'll eat a lot of stuff, and um, they're really cool. I mean, they're really awesome fish. They have really unique uh, movements, so some of them like to shake uh, side to side. Um, just really awesome fish, really interesting and very unique. So... These were some fish I got from another breeder um, in the local community a few years ago. And I got them real small and was able to raise them up. Um, they're on their second or third or fourth generation now. And um, you can tell by the size. Yeah, so this tank is filled with a bunch of really awesome guppies. We have um, some of my absolute best, sorry, green lace guppies. Um, oh, of course it swims away. Some cool green lace guppies, some really nice koi guppies. Um, I have some really beautiful, oh, there's a nice black, half black blue female. Um, just a bunch of random, most beautiful fish. Um, this is the tank that I like to enjoy. A uh, really pretty green lace guppy there. Um, another really pretty green lace guppy. It's a bunch of really beautiful fish. Um, now, it's really important to keep a separate tank with my absolute most beautiful fish just so they can give me the absolute most beautiful babies. And a lot of these fish did come from other breeders. Um, like that beautiful one over there came from Bob Sternfield, a really well-known guppy breeder in the hobby. Um, these koi guppies, they actually came from uh, Lucy. Lucy's Tropical, uh, fish by the river. So just a couple awesome guppies, um, a couple of breeders. We have most of them at our shows every single month at Mount Prospect at the Fins and Feathers Fest. And we have some awesome um, red guppies, some pink ones, and some beautiful uh, color variations of all different types of guppies. So this is an awesome guppy tank, uh, probably my favorite guppy tank in itself. And this is where I have my green uh, lace line. So if you see up here, a uh, very pretty, oh, where did he go? Very pretty colorations in some of these males here with the deep green, um, very pronounced lace. And then with either dots or lines on the body um, to really accent a green lace guppy. Oh, that's now, crazy. these ones are absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um, some huge fantails to them and a lot of females to, uh, Keep having babies, and you can see there's a ton of babies down here in the tank, um, just waiting to be caught. There's a lot of babies up in the you got a um, bunch of babies in there. Yep, in the breeder box, and these guys just love having babies. Now this is my favorite line of guppies, the green lace uh, snakeskin guppy, and they do really well for me in my tanks. Um, they're really beautiful fish, and probably my favorite fish 
overall. I get those to breed with my normal platies. Um, here's another hyphen, but that's a female. So that gold looking one is a hyphen platy. Um, you got some of the Mickey Mouse ones yep. too, I saw already. Right. Got a couple Mickey Mouses, got a couple in just normal. Um, there's a Mickey Mouse there. Oh yeah, front and center, you got it like that. Um, we got some normal oranges and then some with uh, black on the tail as well. So just a whole bunch of different kinds of platies. Um, and then a bunch of black guppies. Uh, black guppies and then half black blue guppies. There's a few of those still left in there. Um, here's a black, half black blue coming by the breeder tank over here, by the breeder box over here. Um, yeah, some really pretty platies. Shout out Neil, thanks for those. Um, and some other awesome Chicagoland breeders, um, all located at the Fins and Feathers Fest in Mount Prospect, of course. Um, and yeah, just every month I'm able to get some awesome fish. Um, these awesome platies, some black guppies, and you can see they have a ton of babies as well. Um, in the breeder box. Yeah, I just love live bears. Live bears are my main, my main thing here. So I like anything guppies, platies, um, rare live bears, anything that has live babies. It's kind of my go-to, and they produce really pretty ones. And I always make sure to separate them um, out into the breeder boxes to make sure that as many stay alive as uh, humanly possible. Uh, there's a half black blue right there. If you want to get your light on that one. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, look at that. So that has a nice blue shimmer to it uh, once yeah. the light hits it nice. You want to oh, there we're trying. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. And Check that out. that one, out. too, actually, is also half wow. black next to it. But, yeah, very pretty. The coloration in some of these are just absolutely amazing. So you mentioned Fins and Feathers Fest. Yeah. Uh, so that's a fish swap. Um, what are some of the benefits of, of fish swaps? You know, like, what exactly are they, really? Yeah, fish swaps are amazing. I mean, they're probably my absolute favorite things to go to, um, to be a part of, and really just have fun at. Um, I mean, there you can find any species of uh, freshwater fish, uh, plants, uh, any kind of shrimp, or any other uh, thing that you can stick in a freshwater aquarium for literally the fraction of the cost of a pet store. And then when you go to um, a fish swap, you know that those breeders, they live in the area. Their water is the same as your water. They love their fish, probably more than you do, and um, they take care of their stuff. So it's a really good uh, community welcoming activity to bring your family to, to have fun, and uh, to get some really cool, nice tanks, uh, fish, accessories, food, basically anything that you could ever need for your fish tank. So that's why I love fish swaps. You know, you, it's funny, you mentioned plants uh, and water parameters. Plants and water parameters is something that I feel um, gets a lot of people, it catches a lot of people off, off guard. They, uh, you know, they get some plants, they order them online, and you know they get them maybe they, they take a little bit of a beating in the ordering process and then they put them in their water and since you know you don't really know exactly what parameters are coming from from somebody else when when they go through that acclimation process sometimes they don't really make it you know that that, yeah. that buzzword melt yeah that, plant melt <laughs> you that know? happens a lot right? and not just with things that are shipped but even if you just go to your local pet store i mean i've gone to that's Mark. I don't know if I'm allowed to say them, but um, <laughs> we can edit that out later. Um, so I've been going to my local pet stores and I've purchased a few fish, um, you know, in the past. And the second I get home, they get sick and they just don't tend to do too well. Um, but I found that fish that I get, even as rare as they come from South America originally, if it's brought up in a, a breeder tank around the Chicagoland area and they're producing su su successful spawns, um, that it's pretty safe to say that I'll have some pretty successful spawns too. And um, we'll see that here soon. So I love uh, local swaps. I love getting local and um, it's also building relationships. I can tell you about every single person I got a fish from and um, how good I am friends with them now. So it's really built great relationships and I get some awesome fish. So I love, uh, I love swaps. It's, it's kind of like the idea, I remember when I first came into the hobby, and I was hearing about like people that go on like collection trips. Now I'm jumping a little bit here, but yeah. 
But you know, they have the reason why those stories or why those fish from collection collection points are really special is because they come with a story. You know, you know that this person went out to this area, captured this fish, and it came with this journey, and then you could tell that story to somebody else. And I think that when you buy fish and plants from a local, you know, person, it brings that more of a, a more of a personal connection to your your pet, you know, at home. You know, you have a story. You're like, I know the guy that bred this. You also know that you're supporting someone's, you know, side business or yeah. side hustle, which gives them, you know, a little bit more breathing breathing room at home. I know a lot of people out there, uh, you know, struggling for money and everything nowadays. Yeah. Tight economy out there, and it's, it's uh, it, you know, support small business, right? <laughs> of course, yeah. No, fish slots are the best. Yeah. Um, yeah, as you said, everyone does this basically as a hobby. It's on the side. It's for fun. Yeah. So um, everyone just tries to make it as fun for the community as possible. Um, fish swaps are awesome. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So that's uh, fins and feathers. Yes, feathers too, huh? So you grab some feathered friends with uh, to join us here. Yeah. So um, what are these guys? So these guys are green cheek conyers. Um, they're just one of the many birds that we have at our fins and feathers fest. Um, and I mean, yeah, again, these come from breeders um, in the Chicagoland area. They love their animals more than the pet stores and uh, train them, and you know really do some good stuff with them so when you're able to take them home they're really nice and um depending on how you get them uh can be as nice as this thanks so much for coming over to uh the fins and feathers fish room tour um we hope you enjoyed it and yeah definitely come check us out at the fins and feathers fest in mount prospect illinois our show swap happens every month um and we're always welcoming new vendors if you are a vendor and um are scared about getting into it contact me hit me up uh, let's talk about it and we can figure something out for you. Um, we're always welcoming brand new vendors. We love our consistent vendors and we really love when vendors, um, you know, do some great work and post on Facebook and really advertise uh, for the show because it, you know, just brings a huge community. It allows everyone to come in, enjoy and uh, partake in this beautiful hobby that we all share. So thank you guys for coming. We'll see you at the Fins and Feathers Fest uh, next month and hopefully every month for some more fishy fun. All right guys, thanks for watching, catch you later.